Hey man, before we get started, can I just say it really, really pays to just ignore every single event going sometimes and just really focus on a champion training tournament like this? Oh my god, we're going to get ourselves a legendary skill tome, couple of immortal soul stones, and we even picked up the good old mythical skill tome as well. Oy, 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 oy. huge upgrades inbound. Anyways, what is up, guys? This is Corp. This video is actually nothing to do at all with champ training. It's going to be all about epic champions that unlock certain areas of the game. Epic champions that are practically cheat codes against specific bosses in the game, both from Dungeons and Doom Tower. And what better place to start than good old Dark Elhane. Free login reward champion that everybody can grab. Her kit is extremely, extremely simple. She isn't an absolutely mind-blowing nuker by any means. Her modifiers are okay. She does kind of smack a little bit, but... No better than most other epic nukers, so what sets her apart? Her A1 is just an attack one enemy with a bit of destroy targets max HP. The A2, she self buffs with increased attack, then attacks all enemies. Has a 75% chance booked of placing the strong version of decreased speed debuff for a couple of turns. Now, you might think, okay, AoE decreased speed. It's not at a 100% land rate, which isn't ideal to bring into places like Hydra. But you know what else isn't ideal for places like Hydra? Having 804 base defense. Oh my god, okay, so she's not really a champ that you're going to be taking into uh, Hydra for the decreased speed. But what Dark Elhane is useful for, as well as certain PvP arena comps actually, which I'm not even going to cover, but Frost Spider in Doom Tower and Ice Golem as the dungeon boss. Why? Well, it's all about both of her passives. She's got a double passive action going. The first on a 110 cooldown. Fill this champion's turn meter by 25% and instantly activate her A2. That's the attack all enemies and increase attack. Whenever this champion or an ally receives a freeze debuff against Frost Spider, against Ice Golem, you're getting frozen all the goddamn time. The 10 meter fill is great. The instant activation on the A2, just automatic activation, is nuts. Okay. Second passive. Again, on 110 cooldown, instantly remove any freeze debuffs on this champion and replace them with an increased crit rate buff and a 30% increased crit damage buff. And a strengthen buff whenever an enemy places a freeze debuff on this champ. So she actually wants to be frozen. She unlocks her full power when she is frozen by the likes of Frost Spider and Ice Golem. Now, is she required to take on these bosses? She isn't, okay? But what she does do is, I don't know, like double your kill speed on these bosses. I mean, of course, you're going to eventually find legendary alternatives and stuff. That's always the way, right? There's always going to be a legendary champion team out there that's just going to do an even better job than an epic champion cheat code. But if you're just getting started and your ice golem kills are taking forever, it's taking like five, six minutes per run to kill stage 20 ice golem and you want to partake in things like ice golem tournaments, Dak Elhin is going to double that kill speed. The only uh, impediment, the only problem you might run into is that you actually hit the Ice Golem too many times too quickly, and because she's got quite low defense, you might struggle to keep her alive, because the Ice Golem's gonna counterattack like crazy, um, depending on certain H uh, HP thresholds that you damage it down past. So you will need to run a team with, you know, some increased defense and, um, you know, a lot of healing and stuff like that, but Dark Elhain, she's a damn good one into basically anything that freezes. Next up, we have an epic champion solo god in the form of Good old Orn, man. Masiliac, Masiliac Priest, I think that's pronounced. Masiliac Priest Orn. This guy, a Chad. This guy can actually solo stage 25 dragon, man. It's crazy as hell. Okay, in the right gear. Of course, all of these kind of like solo carry champs that can actually just go in and solo content. Orn can take out uh, Ice Golem at a really high stage. Minotaur, no problem. Uh, and Dragon at a very, very high stage. He's able to do this because not only does he have a kit that just spams a crap load of poisons and poison activation, but he's also got a passive that helps to keep him alive. Whenever a poison debuff is activated on an enemy, increases this champion's HP and defense by 5%, stacking up to 25%. So very, very tanky. He's also an HP-based champion, so comes with over 20,000 uh, HP at a base stat. But being able to have a champion like this on your account, where you've got him in like full pieces of regeneration gear and whatever, and you've got him built out so that he can live his way through to the boss itself against Dragon and take out stage 25 Dragon alone, it's going to basically trivialize uh, dragon uh, tournaments, right? But not just that, you can run your Mycelic Priest on alongside four food champions during dragon tournaments and just leave them 
on auto battle overnight, just spend like 2,000 energy in the tournament, no problem. Level the crap out of a whole bunch of food champions uh, at the same time as you're farming up all of those tournament points. The efficiency gets off the charts when you have a champ like this built. I should mention as well that with uh, the beginner promo code Mycelium, you can actually get Priest on completely for free on a brand new raid account. Now, of course, the promo code for uh, Monkey King is also still active as well, so you can get Sun Wukong for free. But if Sun Wukong ever becomes unavailable, then... Masiliac becomes a very, very good beginner promo code to enter in on day one of your new raid account. And so if you do happen to kickstart a new raid account, why not do it using my promo link to get your hands on two free epic champions, man? It's linked down below at the top of the video description. Click on that link and sign up to get your hands on Tagore at account level 15 and Rector Drath at account level 25. And maybe you want to input good old uh, beginner promo code Masiliac to get your hands on on as well. Although, let's be real, Monkey King, as long as that... Uh, promo code for Sun Wukong is active. That's going to be your best beginner promo code. But yeah, my promo link down below, man. An incredible, incredible way to jumpstart your juicy new raid account, man. Oi, 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 oi. Should also mention as well that, uh, yeah, if you're creating an old raid account on PC, just make sure that you are logged out of Plarium Play before you click on my promo link down below, just to ensure that you do get all of the beginner rewards, right? You've got to create a new Plarium ID and all that kind of stuff. Next up, we've got the Fire Knight Destroyers, man. I'm not going to cover Alua, to be honest. I'm not going to cover Alua, except I'm going to cover Alua just a little tiny bit. Uh, yeah, she's incredible. She's got a triple hit on a, uh, on a A1. Decrease the target's 10 meter by 25% on each crit. Oh my god. She's incredible for breaking the Fire Knight shield and then just eviscerates his 10 meter forever and just trivializes the hell out of normal mode finite but you know what there are quite a few epic champions that are honestly decent cheat codes going into finite uh Wuzgar isn't bad lordly legionary or legionnaire or whatever the hell he's called wouldn't recommend actually leveling that guy but uh yeah he can also be a decent cheat code fenshi is a good option as well and so i'm not going to spotlight those guys too much what i will spotlight is a champ for hard mode Finite because he completely unlocks this area of the game and it's not even a void epic. It is Creed and the Blue of the Sylvan Watches Magic Finity Champ, pullable from your bloody ancient shards, which is incredible, right? And this guy is not just great into hard mode Finite, but he's incredible into wave content as well. And so his kit breakdown is as follows a triple hitter A1. Each hit with a 35% chance book to placing a freeze debuff for one turn, an all-important debuff to bring into hard mode Fire Knight. On the A2, he's got a double hitter with each hit having a 65% chance of placing a freeze debuff for one turn. Amazing, amazing control and decent damage against waves leading up into the boss. And even then on the A3, he just brings further team utility, important, important buffs with increased speed on all allies for two turns and also some 10 meter fill as well. Creodan? He's crazy as hell, dude. This guy is so, so good. Oh, yeah, we didn't even mention, man, but his passive fills this champion's turn meter by 5% for each individual freeze debuff placed by this champion. And, like, I don't know, 66% of his kit is placing freezes. I don't know, man. Creodan, insane. Completely unlocks hard mode Fire Knight. And it still kind of blows my mind that he's not even a void epic with a kit like that. Next up, another champ that, man, I wish I had. This one is a void epic. And it's good old Godseeker in Neri. Um... Yeah, this gal's crazy as hell. She basically unlocks two-man farming teams into the Sand Devils dungeon, and it's all because of, well, first of all, her revive, which has a very, very special effect on it. It's a four-turn cooldown bug. Revive a dead ally, ally with 50% HP, fill the 10 meter, and reset the cooldown on all of their skills, okay? This is very, very important indeed if your other champ in your two-man uh, Sand Devils team is something like a ninja, and they just want to be spamming the hell out of their HP burn as much as humanly possible, which is the case. It's a very, very good two-man team, Ninja and Aniri, for farming Sand Devil. And then, of course, she has the self-revive on her passive. And it's this kind of combination of skills right here, alongside a damage dealer like Ninja, where you're basically building something like an unkillable two-man team going into Sand Devil. Um, yeah, it just sort of trivializes that dungeon. That's it, really. Godseeker Aniri is a true, true cheat code. Next up, we couldn't cover a cheat code's video without covering the booba lady herself. Good old Lady Annabelle, don't we love her? Everybody loves Lady Annabelle, man. Can't think why. Currently, my badly geared Lady Annabelle with like 240 speed and like 60 or 70,000-ish health is able to solo the lower levels of hard mode Bommel in Doom Tower. She just completely trivializes the boss. Just as long as the rest of the champs on your team are getting her to the boss, she takes it from there, right? 
Why? Well, you put her in a regeneration set, so she's healing every single turn she gets. Her A1 heals her for, well, it's a double hitter, each hit healing for 3%, so every time she A1s, she's healing for 6% of her max HP, which is grit. She places a leech and decrease speed debuff on the A2, further increasing her survivability. And then on her passive, heal this champion by 50% of their max HP whenever an ally or an enemy dies. Of course, the Bommel boss in Doom Tower summons those bombs that explode and hit your team for like 40% of their max HP for each individual champion. Well, as your allies begin to die after those bombs, Lady Annabelle is healing, and as the bombs explode, they also count as enemy entities, meaning that the bombs are dealing 40% of her health as damage, but as the bombs die, she heals 50%. So it's actually just a net gain of HP, and she just can't die against Bommel as long as you build her with enough max HP preferably over 70,000, and then just build her as quick as possible so that her regeneration set is ticking as fast as possible. And you're just good to go. That's it. She's completely trivialized that boss. I'm so, so happy that I have a Lady Annabelle on my account, else I would be ripping my hair out uh, against Bommel. A similar champ that can do the job against Bommel would, of course, be good old Burengiri, who is down here, and his passive just reads exa exactly the same as uh, Lady Annabelle's. He's this champion, 50% of the max HP. I mean, it's identical to Lady Annabelle's. So he can do the job as well. He has a little bit less survivability against the boss because he has uh, a provoke on his A1 and an AoE stun on his A2. So he's a bit better into the waves, but a little bit less survivability against the boss itself. But he can still get the job done. Two cheat codes right there, man. Next up, man, Spider. Epic cheat codes for Spider. I think my pick has got to be good old Mordecai, man. I think it's just got to be, right? Mordecai brings, of course, his AoE HP burn, and it happens to be on his A3. Uh, 410 cooldown, plays HP burn on everybody at a 100% clip. Very, very nice. Also brings an increased attack buff on your allies for a few turns as well. Yeah, you just burn all of the spiderlings and then crowd control all of the spiderlings. AoE stuns, AoE freezes. That kind of thing. Huge AoE provokes can work as well. The point is you're just trying to hold all of the spiderlings still as they are burning and they will just tick down the boss. Very, very good. But what's unique about Mordecai is that he also brings some 10 meter decrease as well on his A2. Has a 100% chance, I guess, booked uh, of decreasing the 10 meters of all enemies by 15% and a bit of 10 meter fill for your allies as well. And of course, controlling the spiders 10 meter in Spider's Den is just another key component to bringing the boss down. And so Mordecai just brings Man, he just has the perfect kit for an epic champion to bring into Spider. Oh, and I should also mention as well that his uh, A3, because it doesn't actually do damage, it simply places the HP burn debuff, means that it can't weak hit into Spider. So he's good into all affinities of Spider as well. You're not going to have that random chance, that off chance of uh, the HP burns just missing and just being resisted uh, by a lot of enemies because of weak hits, right? He just completely circumvents that problem, man. So... Oi, 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 Mordecai is a damn, damn good one. And finally, and oh yes, we're at the end of the video, boys. Almost, almost, man. We've got one more champ to cover here in the High Elves faction, and there is a few that we could cover, but if you feel like I've missed any cheat code epic champions in this video, and I know for a fact that I have, I've just kind of picked some here and there that really, really stand out to me. Make sure to drop them down below in the comments, man. But we got to talk about good old Vegas, and it's extremely unique passive effect. In fact, well, we'll go through the, the rest of his kit first. Um, so his A1 is an attack one enemy, has a chance of placing a reflect buff on a random ally uh, for a couple of turns. He has a continuous heal and increase speed buff and a reflect damage buff uh, on his A2. Also brings some ally protect as well. But yeah, mostly he's going to be buffing himself with this because we're going to be using Vergus to solo the hell out of Scarab King, one of the most annoying bosses that exists in Raid Shadow Legends in the Doom Tower. So on its own, his kit so far is just very, very okay. What you want to do is place Vegas in a destroy set, okay, so that he's just destroying that, um, well, that, that big max HP bar on the Scarab King that reduces its damage taken by a billion, okay? Put him in a goddamn destroy set, a little bit of a mortal gear, potentially just to help out his survivability a little bit. Then you're going to be taking advantage of fully booking out his passive so that this sucker can proc every turn on the active. The full passive reads, place a shield buff on this champion equal to 10% of their max HP for two turns whenever this champion loses 10% or more of their max HP from a single hit. Okay, so you want to let the Scarab actually slap you down enough such that you're actually proccing this uh, on occasion. And the active effect that can proc uh, every single turn, if you fully book the skill, is place a 15% continuous heal buff on this champion for two turns every time their HP drops below 
50%. Yeah, this passive is just going to keep you alive. Now, a couple of caveats to this, right? While Vegas is a very, very accessible epic champion, right? As far as epic champs go, pretty decent chance to pull him. And if you do, he's going to help you out a hell of a lot. Do bear in mind that the gearing of this guy might be a little bit annoying, a little bit finicky, right? If you're a newer player, because yeah, you need to build him in a destroy set so that he can plink down the boss's max HP and actually start doing damage to the Scarab King. The immortal pieces as well are going to be very, very useful for keeping him alive. But you will also have to build him with a solid amount of resistance. Why? The Scarab King is going to be peeling the crap out of your buffs. He's going to be dispelling your buffs. He's going to be cleansing your buffs. And that's a big, big problem when we are relying on a continuous heal buff and the occasional shield in order to live. Okay, so yeah. While he is an accessible champ, the caveat is, is that as a beginner player, you might kind of struggle a little bit to hit the resistance amounts required to... Uh, be consistently resisting the Scarab's buff peel abilities. But that said, he's still an amazing, amazing option and a good project to work on if you do pull a Vegas early on, knowing that he can solo even the most difficult uh, stages of good old Scarab King. No, man, that's all I got. I missed a billion champs. Make sure to put them down in the comments down below and use code GAMELEAP. It's good for your health. It helps to support the channel. And most importantly, get your 100,000 silver, 10 free experience brews and a free energy refill. So why the hell would you not use it and share it with your clan mates, man? Just help your bros out, and it helps me out a hell of a lot too. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you all did enjoy this one, and I'm going to catch all of y'all just a tad bit later, man.